Ready? Let's describe now the muscle, the skeletal muscles, as organs, not as tissues anymore. Um, and what is an organ? Remember, it's the combination of two or more types of tissues. Mostly what we have in the skeletal muscles, of course, is muscle tissue. But we're going to find also connective tissue. We're going to find blood vessels, which are lined by epithelium. And we are going to find nerves that, of course, are formed or consist of nervous tissue. So we have the four types of tissues in these organs. Let's describe the structure of these amazing organs. Uh, these are so neat and organized. Nothing is random in here. So let's start for describing that or letting you know that this, can you recognize this? Hmm? We said that a skeletal muscle cell looks like a cylinder and it has uh, all of those lines, situations in, inside and it has hundreds of nuclei and the plasma membrane. This is a muscle fiber. If we remember, muscle fiber and muscle cell are synonyms. Usually the term used is muscle fiber to refer to one muscle cell, one. Now, if you group, or if you grab a bundle of muscle fibers, okay, you are going to create a, a muscle fascicle. Several muscle fascicles together form the entire muscle as an organ. Now, the entire muscle, if you get to touch that, let's say that that's part of the quadriceps femoris, and I might, it might be that because it's uh, attached to the femur, so if you get to grab the entire muscle <clears throat> before any dissection is made, what you're touching outside is a membrane of connective tissue. Every organ is a gift. So every organ is wrapped in wrapping paper, okay? Uh, gift wrapping paper. So the outer layer, the wrapping membrane around the entire muscle, around all of this is called epi because it's on top mycelium relating to muscle. So all of these whitish membrane around or surrounding the entire muscle is the epimycium. Now this epimycium creates like little invaginations or walls towards the uh, or partitions maybe inside the muscle and create the muscle fascicles, okay? So it's like branches to create different compartments, see? So in here I have a muscle fascicle, a muscle fascicle, another one, another one. This is another muscle fascicle. So we're pulling one of the muscle fascicles from the muscle. And each muscle fascicle is surrounded by another membrane or layer of connective tissue that is called the perimycium. Okay, this is the perimycium. Same story, it branches or creates partitions inside the muscle fascicle, but now to surround individually each muscle fiber. Okay, so now I'm going to pull from, imagine, I always say, imagine a bundle of spaghettis. Uh, you're grabbing a bundle of spaghettis and and the entire package of spaghetti, that's your muscle. Let's take a bundle of spaghetti, that's your mu muscle fascicle, and it's still wrapped in a bundle, it's still, and it's kept together by perimycin. From here, from this muscle fascicle, this bundle of spaghetti, <clears throat> I can pull one individual spaghetti, that's the muscle fascicle, I'm sorry, the muscle fiber. And the muscle fiber is surrounded by the innermost of the connective tissue membranes, which is the endo inside endomycium. Now, endomycium, perimycium, and epimycium, as you can see, they are they converge to form the same membrane. They are a perimycium or partitions of epimycium and endomycium are is a continuation of perimycium. This is important 
to understand later on part of the contraction uh, process. So endomycium, perimycium, and epimycium fuse together to form a tendon. And what is a tendon? Remember, it's connective tissue. So it's dense, regular connective tissue. And it is what attaches the muscle to the bone. Don't confuse, please, that with a ligament. Ligament attaches bone to bone. Now, <clears throat> the tendon <clears throat> or the shape of the tendons are uh, cylindrical. It's like a core. Uh, uh, you can see these in here. These are tendons. Okay, in here, those are tendons. Can you see that? That's a tendon. <clears throat> if that's not the only way a muscle can uh, attach to the bone, sometimes attaches by a broad sheet of these layers of connective tissue. Instead of forming a cord, it forms a sheet, and in that case, we call that an aponeurosis. It's just another way to attach a muscle to uh, the muscle to a bone. Other bones, I'm sorry, other muscles actually don't attach to the bone through tendons or aponeurosis. It's just attach directly, the flesh of the muscle attaches directly to the bone. <clears throat> okay, so let's go the other way uh, around. So remember, epimysium, let's review this one more time. Epimysium surrounds the entire muscle. The muscle consists of several muscle fascicles, uh, and each muscle fascicle is surrounded by the perimysium. The Muscle fascicle consists of a bundle of muscle fibers, and each muscle fiber is surrounded, surrounded by a layer uh, of a real or connective tissue, which is the endomycin. Can you see this picture? Any, you know, similarity with reality or with shredded meat is a coincidence. Think about, I'm sorry if I'm going to destroy your lunch now. And <clears throat> but think about meat. Grab a piece of meat and you can, raw meat of course, and you can see those layers or some of those layers. You can grab the entire flank steak and <clears throat> the entire muscle will be covered by a dense, tough layer of connective tissue, the epimycin, you need to cut it with a knife, you cannot destroy it with your fingers. Then you can see inside the muscles and you can see each of these <clears throat> is a muscle fascicle. See, there is surrounded by a more delicate membrane that you can destroy with your, your fingers, that is the perimysium. And if you get to shred that meat, you are going to be shredding, well, I wish we can get to the cell level, but uh, we can get to the cell, okay? Um, <clears throat> so we can keep shredding, 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 and imagine that oh, we got to the cell. Of course, we cannot grab it. Now, the cell. Let's describe how this skeletal muscle cell looks like, the fiber. So again, this is the muscle. This is the muscle fascicle. This is the fiber. This is what we're seeing. Remember, it's the cylinder with the striations and a lot of nuclei. Now, let's see how it looks inside, okay? So, this is the cylinder. This is the plasma membrane or plasma lemma. In the skeletal muscle fiber, we call this the sarcolemma, okay? And the cytoplasm inside is all of this, totally different to any type of cell that we have described before. That is the sarcoplasm. So instead of cytoplasm, sarcoplasm. And remember, we have hundreds of nuclei. Here we have one nucleus, another, and another one, uh, another nuclei, nucleus. Now, organelles. Which organelles can we find? Well, a lot, but a lot of mitochondria. Um, and the amount of mitochondria will vary depending on the type of skeletal muscle. But usually they have a lot because remember they create they uh, they <clears throat> give the energy to power all of these uh, processes the muscle contraction. What else? We have 
endoplasmic reticulum. And the <clears throat> smooth endoplasmic reticulum here in the muscle, the skeletal muscle fiber, is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remember that one of the important functions of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is to store calcium. So <clears throat> that's one thing that we are going to remember in here. It stores calcium. We're going to use that. And it's all of these blue meshwork, you know, uh, neatly placed on top of these cylinders that we'll describe in a little while. So this is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Is you, if you can see in here, towards, you know, each end of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it ends in this chamber, and this is called a terminal cisternae. I don't have the, yeah, terminal cisternae. That's the name of that uh, part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, is the part actually that uh, stores the calcium ions. Now, in the sarcoplasm, imagine that you can poke like a balloon, you can put your finger inside to create an invagination. Let's see if we can see that in here. This is the sarcoplasm. Uh, and <clears throat> this, imagine that you're poking your finger right in here, see, and you create this invagination. This is called the T tubule. It is plasma membrane, it is the sarcoplast uh, lemma. Uh, and the T tubule, which is the invagination of, of the sarcolemma, is always located in between two terminal cisternae. Okay, so the combination of a T tubule and two terminal cisternae, one on either side, is called a triad. Triad in here. And these structures, all of these complex uh, organelles, wrap individually each of these sticks, filaments. Uh, that we can see in here. Now, you can see the cytoplasm consists of several of those cylindrical structures, and each of them are called myofibril. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight myofibrils. Within, inside each myofibril, we can keep pulling from that spaghetti bundle, we can keep pulling baby spaghetti is from there uh, and we are going to find myofilaments and we have two types of myofilaments one of those myofilaments are thick thicker than the other ones the thick ones are called myosin filaments and the thin ones are called actin myofilaments uh, um, this is what we are going to start with uh, on the next video, describing this structure. Now, remember, these cells, the uh, skeletal muscle fibers, lack centrioles, so we can they cannot divide. Did I mention everything in here? Blah, 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 yes. Now, let's review this one more time because I bet you are like, what is she talking about? Let's review all of the organization of the skeletal muscle. You want to start from here? Yeah, let's start from the entire muscle, okay? So the entire muscle is covered by epimysium, dense irregular connective tissue. And the entire skeletal muscle consists of several bundles of muscle fascicles. Each muscle fascicle is surrounded. Let's pull one from there, and I have it here, see? So each muscle fascicle is surrounded by perimysium. Oh, perimysium, I'm sorry. And uh, each muscle fascicle consists of several muscle uh, fibers. Let's pull one of those muscle fibers. And we have here an individual muscle fiber covered now, covered now by the entomysium. The, which is the uh, delicate areolar layer of connective tissue surrounding each muscle fiber. Each muscle fiber consists, the cell per se, consists of the sarcolemma, which is the plasma membrane, 
inside the sarcoplasm and a hundred, at least a hundred nuclei. We can the important organelles that we mentioned before in this muscle fiber are then the mitochondria providing the energy ATP to power the muscle contraction and the sarcoplasmic reticulum that uh, stores the, cal the calcium ions necessary to uh, for the filaments to interact and produce muscle contraction. And <clears throat> each muscle fiber uh, consists of in, within the sarcoplasm consists of several myofibrils, another organelle. And each myofibrils, I'm sorry, we can, can you see here, <clears throat> each of the red dots is one myofibril. You can pull one myofibril, and let's place it in here, and each myofibril, first of all, is surrounded by a sleeve of uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remember, the sarcoplasmic reticulum enlarges on, on either side of the T tubule to form the terminal cisternae where we storage the we can store <clears throat> the calcium ions. In between two terminal cisternae, we're going to find the yellow part is the T tubule, which is just an invagination from the sarcolemma, the plasma membrane of the um, skeletal muscle fiber. So this is part of the plasma membrane that we have in there. This anatomy, guys, is very important that you understand the detailed anatomy of the muscle so we can understand how it contracts. Now, each uh, myofibril consists of several myofilaments. Can you see all of those dots in there? So now we can, again, keep pulling that spaghetti from the spaghetti bundle and we're going to have several um, myofilaments. And we have the blue ones are thicker than the red ones. These are the myofilaments, the ones located in here, see? The blue and the red. And they just pull them out in here, out of the myofibril, and I'm seeing just myofilaments. We have two types, the thick Fil myofilaments are called uh, myosin filaments and the red ones are the thin myofilaments that are called actin, called actin uh, filaments. Um, the, in okay, the organization or the arrangement of these myofilaments is very unique and precise and the, uh, the relation of these uh, myofilaments with the sarcoplasmic reticulum and T2 is very specific as well. Now, the interaction between myosin and actin is what creates when they slide one uh, uh, across the other is what creates muscle contraction or shortening of the muscle. That's what is coming next. We're going to describe the, <clears throat> the structure of or how these myofilaments uh, organized into the basic unit of the skeletal muscle called the sarcomere. See you in the next video.